Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Okay, I'm Bonita. I'm here with Miriam. We are going to talk about manifestation while we are bending spoons. Little. <laughs> I love this one. This one, and you I, I bent it <laughs> and then I straightened it and then I bent it and then I straightened it. And each time it was like, uh, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> I'll try playing with it again. And I bent that and I tried to straighten it. It hasn't gone all the way because I stopped, but they could be straightened back up too. That one was a lot more bent. Yeah, you did a lot of straightening. It was like, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had one student one time uh, bend a spoon into a complete U. Wow. So I've had people do that a few times. Mm -hmm. So we have a challenge before us. <laughs> <laughs> and then I love doing little forks. Look at that. <laughs> That's like sculpture now. <laughs> I know. I know. I have. Somewhere in here, I have a big. Mm. <laughs> I, oh my I know it's super heavy. Somewhere in here, I have a couple of like things where I've like bent a, a spoon and a fork together. And just to let you guys know, these are very hard. Like, oh I yeah, even do it with you know, like they don't let you do anything to them that's the whole point it's not supposed to be done by pressure this is a point at which the metal yields and that's when they bent so when but you, you can also do like disposable plasticware if you don't have silverware but go on Mario. sorry and for those of you who don't know my hand my dominant hand is sensitive due to a uh, health issue that came came about last year so it really doesn't do well with pressure or anything else that <laughs> bothers it so if i'm bending these you know it's not because i'm putting pressure on it this hand just can't handle it so yeah and i'm old and arthritic <laughs> no. you're not Oh, oh yeah. Oh, see? <laughs> now you know what? Oh look at that. Y yeah, so you guys, this is like regular silverware yeah, that you yeah. that you buy, you yeah. know, to eat with. This is not, you know, any sort of oh look at this. This is like an antique spoon that I got. <laughs> it is so cute. Look at that. Yeah. So I know I've like shared this story before, and I'm gonna share it again. Uh, some years ago, I was doing a class with teenagers, an all-day workshop um, on PT skills. And um, so we were having lunch and, um, and I said to the kids, what would happen if we did the same thing that we're doing on silverware, if we did it on the disposable plastic wear at cafe we were eating at and um so the kids like were having fun because we found if we tried to force it they would snap they would break look at that but if we um did the spoon bending they became malleable and things that i bent that day i still have in this big old bin and they're still bent so then we got back to my wellness center and they wanted to bend everything they're like, I wonder if I can bend your doorknob. <laughs> I wonder if I can. And they ran into my the commercial kitchen part and they wanted to grab all of my like commercial, like the expense. Look at that girl. I think I cracked it. That happens sometimes. Oh well, my. Yeah. I, long, so it stays on, but it's got, I think I'm yeah. it. <laughs> I did the same to this some time ago. Yeah. So I said, I was like, I don't want you guys bending my commercial equipment, but they were doing some construction work nearby and they had dumped a bunch of like rebar pieces in the parking lot near my wellness center. So I sent them outside to grab rebar 
and they came in and they're like bending the rebar like it was butter oh my tying the rebar in bow knots it was crazy so I've told this story a few times and then the last time I did a live stream which was what was it October November uh Ted Trip Ted Tanka um I don't know, speak, T, T, Ted T, uh, who's an amazing healer. He told me afterwards, he's like, he got like a thing of rebar and he bent it with the live stream just to see yeah. if he could. And he actually did. <gasps> oh my God. So, okay. So um, let's see. Yay, Ruth. I'm so glad you're here. And hi, Kim. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> so, ooh, this got really soft all of a sudden. So I'm going to move hard. And then I acknowledged that it was soft and it got hard. <laughs> I'm going to move on to a Thanks. spoon here. You see what I just... I see. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> I cannot... I can't right. do anything this with it. Like, <laughs> now this is hard yeah. again. I'm not putting it on. I, honest to goodness, I cannot move these things to save my life. And you know what? So that's the thing about this spoon bending. And this is why I wanted us bending spoons while we talk about manifestation. Um, and the reason why I wanted Mariam here of all the people in the world for this. <laughs> <laughs> Mariam is an amazing spoon bender. Um, the first time I ever taught spoon bending, <laughs> Mariam was there. Yes, you taught me this, Bonita. And then you went home that day, showed it to your daughter, who then taught it to your husband. <laughs> and this struggling. <laughs> right. And at the same time, Mel, who was there with her kids, her daughter went out into like their cul-de-sac with a bunch of spoons and taught all of her, the neighborhood kids who all went home and taught their parents. So like a few hours after class, Mel was getting calls from her neighbors saying, um, what did I just do to my silverware? And why am I told you're responsible? <laughs> so the energy goes forward. Yeah. That was on a Sunday and then Wednesday night, that was when our Tuesday group met at, on Wednesdays you showed up with a box full of silverware and you taught what was it like 40 people in the group right how to right. bend spoons on the spot and you know it's it's always really fun to watch that especially like kids because they don't have filters they just right. get right in it and they believe they can and they do it immediately so you just don't this is not something you do with your mind look at that it has to be just you know you you Come. You just know it. You just know it. They let you. I mean, it tells you, do it. And yeah. then you do it. Look at that. Yeah. yeah, it's got a little double loop there. This is cool. This is like really good old silverware. Like and These so, are so hard. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying yeah. to like go like this and it doesn't move anymore. And oh. I'm going to see whether it lets me twist it or it just wants me to move to another one. So we'll see. Yeah. So that's part of the thing. Like this one that I was doing, it would be like, no, no, no. And then suddenly I'll have a yielding moment where then it would go, but then I get excited. I would go look and it would seize up. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> then no, 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 no. Then everything would get in alignment and suddenly it would just like be like super, super malleable. And this is just like manifestation. You know, you got to be in alignment. You cannot force things to happen and you cannot like work against the natural flow. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, something to remind people of that manifestation doesn't mean you just sit there, fan yourself and things <laughs> just flow towards you. Although that would be very nice. Sometimes it may feel like that's how it is, but Remember all the times that you set your intentions for something. Mm -hmm. It can work both ways, both positive and not so positive. So remember how you phrase things, what you do. And the fact is, once you do it, you just let it go. Don't 
block it with your mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have to be energized when you put the intention out there, you know, you energize it. Uh -huh. so I think this spoon is, oh, maybe it's letting me straighten it back up, maybe. And Mariam and I, we have both recently been through all of this. Oh, hi, Patty. Yes. Hi, Patty. Hi. Hi, Crystal. <laughs> so we have both recently been through this, and I wanted us both here because we have both very successfully manifested. We're on both on like the perfect path for ourselves, and it's not what we thought we were going to do or be. It's not what we thought. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted us here because. Um, few things about manifesting that drive me nuts. One is like when I had my wellness center or even now sometimes, you know, someone and I will agree that we'll do a project together. And then I go and I do all the marketing, you know, and I would make the flyers or the handouts or the, you know, like I would do all the work and the other person would go, oh yes, I manifested that it would be successful. And they don't do anything. I did, oh, look at you. I would do everything and I would say to them, but you're not contributing anything. They're like, oh no, I sat and meditated and manifested in success. And I'm like, oh. I did all the work and everyone has showed up with, you know, it would be so frustrating because as you said, the, the visualizing, the getting into alignment is great, but you, it really helps if you go forward on your path, you take like a lick of action. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And to also be open to the possibilities that come your way. Like for you and I, both of us, um, we're doing things we hadn't considered. That is right. You know? You yeah. Talk with the Akashic Record librarians and all the things that they want you to do when that wasn't necessarily first on your list at the time, right? No, actually, first on my list was to be a food scientist and a nutritional <laughs> chef. And a bit of a difference from what you do now. <laughs> and revolutionize healthcare kitchens, which I did for a long time. But um, yeah, the journey from that, oh my God. It, it's like that's made out of paper. <laughs> but um when I listen to whoever is, because it's unique for each person, right. whoever is setting me on my healthiest course, I was very successful with my work, but it was not healthy for me. Who I, this course of helping people claim their connection with their eternal state of self is very healthy for me and I'm doing, I feel like, as much good. But um, it's a lot more fun. <laughs> a lot less stressful. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. When something is in alignment, even if we're not seeing it at the time, there is this flow and there is this ease. Mm -hmm. Without question. But like things like the things we usually want to manifest are things like uh, money, romance, or friendship. You know, yeah. like a, a group of friends or my soulmates. Uh, I've had people come to me. <laughs> this is so bad. I've had clients like many times come to me and say, can you help manifest my soulmate? And I'll say, well, um, aren't you married? And they'll say, yeah, but I don't want to get divorced till I get my soulmate. <laughs> uh... <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm the one to help you here <laughs> because we would have a whole lot of work to do that <laughs> like now <laughs> you got some karmic lessons you have to like I, I'll help you with your karmic lessons but no <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the things we want to manifest are usually pretty basic you know like I want to feel happy or I want to feel connected or I want to have my basic needs taken care of without stress or anxiety. Right. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Right. So when 
I tell my guides like, okay, I want money. They're like, what for? Like, we know you don't really want money. Money is meaningless. You know, like we can give you a million dollars. You're not going to keep it. So you don't really want it. <laughs> it's not the money you want. What do you want? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what if they give you a million dollars and they're like, okay, now you must keep it forever. Yeah, that's not going to work. No, yeah. what you want is what you can do with the do money. With it. It's True. not the money. True. And that's where people trip up. They're like, oh, I want the money. I'm like, no, what do you want? Exactly. Well, I want a pay raise. Okay, why do you want a pay raise? Because I deserve to be in a better, a little bit there, a better position at work or be respected and, you know, have days off or, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to move to a fork now. <laughs> yeah. So now if I want money, because I do have, like everyone, I have bills to pay. I tell the, uh, my guides, okay, here's how much money I want. Dang. And here's when I want it by. I want this money so I can have all my bills paid without any concern. So I don't get stressed or nervous or anxious. So I'm sleeping well at night. So that way I can be the open vessel for the work you want me to do. Mm -hmm. So really, this is for you guys. It's not for me. Right. Wow. <laughs> I'm having fun with the forks. They're letting me do this. Yeah. So I'll tell them that. And then that day, however much money I need, a little more than that worth of work will come to me. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And all the work will be completed you know, before the date. So, but um, I think I told you about my friend who could just manifest money in his checking account. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so you, know, you guys- I tried that, it hasn't worked yet. Well, here's the thing, okay. I think I so, didn't do a component of that, yeah. Yeah, I can't give away his name, I promised to him. No, I no, no, don't, know. don't. Yeah, I promised him I never would. Um, but I have this friend who, whenever he needs <laughs> money, this he just looking like it's running away. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever he needs money, he does a meditation where he visualizes himself going to his ATM and like he visualizes every detail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then he deposits that much money in his checking account. And um, I sat with him one time. He said, look, I'm about to manifest a thousand dollars. So we went online. He showed me his checking account, you know, like not the username or password or stuff, but like he showed me his bank statement and I saw how much money was in there, how much was pending, et cetera, et cetera. But and then we sat and we manifested together. He's like, you go ahead and help me. Um, and he said, and while, while I'm doing it, you go ahead and do it with me. Um, and dream that, you know, just meditate that you're with me while I'm doing this. I'm like, okay. So he did it. He deposited a thousand dollars. Wow. He went online, looked at his statement and literally there was a thousand dollars just deposited. And so he had deposited cash so uh, the bank uh, the bank didn't have an issue with this like well, no because um i had the idea in my head i kept saying where did it come from how did you get this and he's like he said the mistake is thinking if you receive something that means it came from somewhere but really the bank account is just computer code a series of numbers and all he did was adjust the series of numbers. So very nice. So this money did not come from anywhere. It was just adjusting code in the program to alter a series of numbers that, you know, do not have any impact on anyone. So then we tried with me. 
And uh, with his help, I was able to deposit money into my account. And then I freaked out. And the next day I went to the bank and I said, there's a thousand dollars in my account. And they said, okay. And I was like, where did it come from? And they're like, you deposited it? And I was like, but where did it come from? Like, are you sure it should be there? And they're like, yeah, it's your money. And I said to them, I think it's a mistake. I think it's just code. And they're like, uh, no, like they look and they're like, no, this is your money. I don't know what you want us to do. No one's ever asked us to like take from them before. <laughs> so since then, a couple of times on my own, because I got overwhelmed asking for a thousand dollars, although at that point it was so helpful. Um, on my own, I've been able to deposit up to a hundred dollars at a time. But my brain locks up and it's like, no, 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 no. You can't do more than that. Like that's as much as I can do before I freak myself out. So um, for me, what works is I just have my guides bring me the amount of work that I need for the amount. So I have trouble getting out of that for me to receive, someone else has to give attitude. So that's something I've been working on for the last, this was like, I guess like six or seven years ago and I'm still working on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, a good lesson that uh, this, the whole point of this manifestation is not for me to get money, for me to work on why is it in myself I block things just happening for me, as opposed to feeling like I have to work for them. Yeah, I'm, I've am i worked on manifestation too. I mean, and I have realized that it does come in different forms, but the one constant is to be very clear about the end result, like yeah. exactly what it is. Like you said, if you say, oh, I want to have, I don't know, like a million dollars or whatever. Well, having done what? What to do with it? What is the end result of that? Exactly. So that the universe can be clearer about what it is. Yes. Now, when I got my house... That was the strangest thing because I wasn't thinking about manifesting a house. I just was um, suddenly, and you know, I've been happily like nomadic, homeless for three and a half years now. Um, and if it weren't for the quarantine, I would still be bumming around the world and not feeling the need to, yeah. you know, settle down yet. But uh, there we go. There's one of those curly cues you like. I got three loops. Okay, so I just broke my spoon. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to straighten it back up, but I guess he couldn't take it. <laughs> yeah. So it just hit me that it was time for me to get a house. And I just kind of, I found like whenever anything would get stressful, I would stop and say, well, this is not the way. And I would talk to my guides and say, let's find another way because I didn't want anxiety. So... I guess like two weeks of going through that process. It was a month altogether from when I first thought it's time for me to get a house to when I put in the bid for my house. But in one of the meditations, it came down to me, a certain dollar amount would be the perfect amount to spend on this house. So I was like, okay. And also it was just like, Every house I looked at that I fell in love with happened to be in the same town. Like, I was looking at a general two-state area, but every time I'm like, oh, here's someplace I love, it was always in the same town. I was like, okay, in the whole two states, every house I like is in this one town. And I just have it in my head, it should be this amount of money. And then I got a surprise, um, uh, uh, was it uh it was just like a surprise gift financial gift for the exact amount of money for the house and the first year of taxes and insurance and 
half the money for buying a new car and all the money for the move. It was like a bundle of money was given to me out of the blue, like totally unexpected. And it happened to be the exact amount I needed. So um, the house is paid for in cash. Like That's I was given a free house. And then I was like, well, now I really need to work and earn money to like buy nice things for my house. And um, I got a full scholarship to get another degree in web design. Mm -hmm. So that, and it's online. And so now like within one month, I went from like homeless and unemployed basically. I mean, we joke about nomadic traveling the world footloose, but really I was like homeless and unemployed to owning a house, two cars, and having a full scholarship to go back to college and all of it just given to me. And it was because I went into the flow, but I also went forward with action and I communicated, this is what I need to say in the flow. This takes me out of the flow. And I didn't even think about the fact that I was manifesting until afterwards it was done. I was like, like, you know, when you're spoon bending and you kind of go into a semi-trance state and yeah. it's like, oh my God, did I just do this? <laughs> Manage the like night has been the more challenging thing for me. Yeah. Take that out. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> this is what you do not want coming at you when you're in the dental chair. <laughs> This one looks like it's running away. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maria, we have a question for you from Ruth. How many pieces of did you order and how many are left? I guess of silverware? I ordered a, uh, let me look at this set. It's a set service for four. So it's got four of knives, forks, spoons, salad forks and teaspoons. Mm -hmm. I have done, actually, what do I have left? I only have like two of the teaspoons, three of the teaspoons left, <laughs> um, three forks and one more knife. I've bent the rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's addictive it is kind of like you're just having fun bonita and i always have fun talking to each other and then before we know it we've like bent a whole bunch <laughs> yeah mariam and i i'll tell you guys something um i've been doing a little spoon bending but really i've not been doing my proper spoon bending practice and doing like fine things i've just been doing the little twist things up as opposed to making artwork um and lately you know the last couple of months been a little occupied and mariam has been you know doing other things with her life her amazing cosmic angelic arts and um so we agreed to meet at 3 30 on zoom and practice bending spoons before you saw we saw and immediately we're just like yeah <laughs> We were immediately just like mangling the cutlery because our energy together got both of us like, whew. So, Mariam, tell them about the work you're doing now because let me give a preamble to everyone. You guys, Mariam is an amazing energy healer, artist, like an amazing teacher, and a life coach. And while like we see how all of this is connected and Mariam worked as a life coach for me, I hired her, uh, what was it, last spring? And boy, so helpful, so helpful. Those sessions were like really life altering for me, really helped me get on track. Um, so there's the work that you felt like you should be doing. And then you started getting more manifesting and stopped fighting the flow. So tell them about that because it was really uh, inspirational for me to see you go through your process and what has come of it. Okay, um, thank you for 
your kind words. Um, I've, you know, I, as you know, I'm a trained art therapist. So basically the whole coaching thing was a very natural switch to go into coaching, thinking, why have I not considered that before? And that kind of also was manifested through the universe, through circumstances. However, I was very adamant about, okay, I want to coach, I want to coach, I want to coach, and sort of like fixated on that until, you know, um, after, I mean, I had clients here and there. However, after I did the healing, which was the first time I opened up to something different, that all of a sudden I realized, oh, I'm supposed to get trained in this as well. And I went along with that. And then um, I decided that I wanted to sort of do some therapeutic stuff for myself. And I started those angel paintings that I had done just for myself. And then I was so guided, thank you. I was guided to make, make them as an offering, you know, just to put them, make them available. And I was just fighting that for a long time thinking, that's not, that was in my direction. And, you know, I want to coach and all that stuff. And finally, it was so forceful that I just decided like, okay, whatever, fine. You know, I'm just going to make these available. And you've seen that like almost immediately when I made them available and I was guided what to say about them too. Like, you know, it wasn't like this, you know, my guys were like, no, they're not going to be just paintings. You're going to be charging them. You're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. The messages we're going to give you and all that. So I just put that down. I'm like, okay, whatever, fine. And all of a sudden, you know, it's just sort of like took off. And I've been getting commissions ever since. And it's been over a year now that now I have 11 people on wait list. For that is amazing. 11 people. I'm like, oh my God, freaking out. Like, I have so many who, you know, like not to take so long doing it and all that stuff. So it's the point being that when you open to other possibilities, things happen. And sometimes it might look like a little bit of a detour, but there is always a reason that, that you want to just welcome something new that's coming to you. You know, I wanted to manifest clients. Well, here they are. <laughs> They're clients. <laughs> and that's the thing, because I saw you every step of the way. Yes. Whenever you would say, but where are my life coaching clients? I, you know, I'm getting these, you know, this cosmic angel art clients, but I should be getting like, how can I do this for the life coaching? Like at that point, things would freeze up for you because you're exactly. every single time. And so it wasn't just like a simple thing for you. You really had to acclimate, adjust, figure out, you know, how do I make this work? And now because of saying yes to that, I, um, if it's okay, I'm gonna share here. Mm -hmm. I'm launching a group coaching a pilot program on the 18th of January. And it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be for people who want to empower themselves, mainly, you know, women. I geared, geared it toward women, but I'm not going to keep any guys if they want to take it. And I've already had some interest. I haven't even promoted it yet. And I've had some people being interested in it. So that is going to be coaching, but it's going to be really fun because I am going to use creative stuff for it. Mm -hmm. so um, that's just how it's going to be you know the the creativity is going to be part of what I do and I think I'm beginning to understand that you know I'm an art therapist I'm doing these angel paintings this is creative stuff and I'm going to engage people in doing whatever's creative for them and look at you with that spoon I mean with that yeah. fork I put my fork away the energy is getting so much in my hand it's actually like hurting my hand right now because <laughs> it's buzzing <laughs> yeah. the uh, classes you taught at my wellness center and there's two in particular i'm thinking about one was when you had us do our vision board but it was very artistic i still have mine oh do you i still have it because like everything happened and things are still happening like it's still relevant 
And the way you had us do it was such a wonderful, emotional, intuitive, creative, fun process. Like there was no thinking or, you know, we were truly in it. I mean, that was a, a very manifestation-based artistic class. And the other one where you had us create our personal mandalas or our personal... Was and, it the tree or the mandala? I had Well, both, both. Yeah, I love the creating your personal tree, but that one was fun. But the one where we create our person, I still have all of those. Oh, wow. And my mandala that has a dragon coming out of the center of oh, it. Oh, well, that's right. You had a dragon. fire everywhere. You're creative, but like everything was ended up, even though it was all just like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, this. And you're not thinking we were drinking wine and chatting and having fun and it was such a jolly class. It was only afterwards when we were sharing what we did and you were telling us your inspiration and then later meditating with them. People were calling me for like weeks and months afterwards saying, oh my God, only now I'm really understanding what I created and how That's meaningful. Wonderful. That's yeah. great to hear. Yes, I really believe in all of those. Um, so you know, point being from both of us that blocking what's coming is going to block other things as well, you know? Yeah. Oh, Kathleen Burns says she loves her angel from you. Thank you. Hers was very sweet. I had so much fun working on that. Thank you so much, Kathleen. <laughs> and Patty Edwards says, hi. Hi, Patty. She's an angel lady, an angel healer. <laughs> I was talking to Patty Edwards on the phone yesterday and like next thing I knew my bedroom, I was in my room, we were chatting on the phone and there's like Metatron and Archangel Michael and Gabriel was there and I can't give away Patty stuff. They were like sending messages to her. <laughs> she's and wonderful. She, yeah. And she's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I like, yeah. I, Patty, call me anytime. I love it when my environment fills with angels. They're so <laughs> to you through me. That was awesome. That was like <laughs> um, a different side of them than what I usually get. <laughs> Funny, um, Gabriel showed up also. I was, it, it's um, one of my close friends' birthdays on Thursday, it was New Year's, and uh, I was going to see her. So a day before that, I'm like, you know, I, I already had her gift, but I'm like, there's something missing here, you know? So um, all of a sudden, Angel Gabriel, I mean, Archangel Gabriel, he's like, that's it. That's what you're missing. So I went to Terra, Terra Krista and I had to look for an <laughs> Archangel Gabriel because it was just so like, that's it. This is it. I, I have to get something that's a representative. And I found this cute little statue actually that lit up. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's it. <laughs> so funny. I hadn't, I hadn't seen Gabriel in a long time. So. I guess she's connected to Archangel Gabriel. Yeah, very cool. Um, so I want to ask you, your program you have coming up, how long does it run for? It's seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit involved, but it's all fun because you get to do a little bit of, well, I don't want to call it shamanic, but I don't have a better term. <laughs> yeah. So it has some shamanic elements, meaning you're going to call on elements to get certain stuff done. And I would, I'm also going to uh, take you on a journey to meet your unicorn and dragon. So, you know, me, I, I gotta have a connection with magic. I mean, it's like, that's how it's gonna be. So it's going to have that, but through this journey, you get to find out the story that you're telling yourself and you get to edit it. So it's really fun. I'm looking really forward to it. It's, um, you know, take advantage of this introductory offering because it's not always gonna be this. 
and I will post, Mariam, um, once you promote it, promote it in the comments here on Facebook with a video so that anyone who's watching goes, where is it? It's in the comments section starting Monday, tomorrow. tomorrow yeah, yeah, I'm going to actually promote it for real. I'm going to go on live tomorrow, just a Facebook mm -hmm. live talking about it a little bit, but um, it'll be promoted starting tomorrow and I'll have the event um, published. You know, I'll, I have an event page that I've already created, but um, I'm going to like let it loose. <laughs> So, so people can sign up. So anyone who is watching this, who doesn't yet know Mariam personally, friend her on Facebook. Friend her on Facebook. And, and do you have a- pro my posts, yeah. 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 And uh, in the comments, in the description here, we have links to Mariam's website. Thank you. So look at the energy that you got. Yeah, I totally well, look at what you're doing. Yeah, look at that, the, the times are all, <laughs> they're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i looped the uh thing a bit that's all posting on your energy girl <laughs> yeah You're so i'm saying looping. <laughs> and i'm putting in the uh comments right now starting uh one week from today one week from today i am offering a manifestation class series and I just put it in the comments. Um, it meets every uh, three Sundays, I think, and then uh, the full moon Monday night for like, we'll have, it's four classes. So it's four Sundays. The first one, we're manifesting our soulmates, our soul families. And the second one, we're manifesting whatever we want for ourselves. Class three, we're manifest, learning to manifest for those we love, people we love and care about. And then class four is learning to manifest for planetary or multidimensional well-being. And then we'll do uh, on the full moon, anyone who wants, we'll meet and we'll do a group full moon manifestation. And part of that will be like planetary manifesting and part of it will be whatever you want. <laughs> And it'll be fun. It'll be really fun. The whole class is $75. No. What is the class cost? Oh my God. I don't even know. Yeah. $75 for all four classes plus the, uh, uh, the manifestation video. And uh, you can access the videos again and again and again. So it, it's not just one shot. You can go back and enjoy the the information anytime you want uh, oh yeah Yolanda I hope you can join us <laughs> um, and um, let's see this Saturday at four o'clock here on my Facebook page I'm meeting on a with a panel of master manifestors shamanic angelic um, tarot and we're going to just have a general conversation on manifestation and how we how they've manifested things in their lives so that will be very interesting uh i guarantee gary nicky will be there and yeah and i'm not sure if um alexandra victoria can join us or not she had manifested a life for herself living like for free at a beautiful estate in South America. So um, she's <laughs> a little okay. Yeah, she's doing great. She's like, she's COVID quarantining in paradise. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my sister-in-law came at who is a, an, a real shaman. She is, um, uh, my my oldest son's wife's mother, she is a tribal elder coming from, I forget how many tribes in New England. That is and, awesome. Yeah, and she is a shaman. She is also um, on one side of her family, druidic, very powerful medium, does card oh, readings. Wow. Like This woman is crazy powerful. When she walks in a room, she sees 
everything. She is absolutely amazing. Uh, and so she'll be there and uh, Uma, Uma Alexandra will join us to bring her interesting future vision tarot. Let's see how we can adjust everything to be the best for self and others energy. So. She's a powerful manifester. Yeah, I know that of her for sure. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And she's really fun. <laughs> Um, so yes, I hope you can join us this Saturday, four o'clock on my Facebook page. And then starting Sunday, um, I think this manifesting class, I've taught manifestation a number of times and it's something I really love to share because we go through life working so hard to make things happen. And here we have this wonderful tool that things can happen effortlessly. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's not just one tool. It's little things like, for me, like it's listening to your guides, you know? Like three and a half years ago, God, almost four years ago, when they said to me, sell everything, lighten your load. And I immediately listed everything I had for sale because I learned, listen to them. But they give me very, very direct, very direct uh, advice. I'm wise to follow it. And magically, everything I listed on Craigslist sold like within that day for the asking price or more. And in less than a month, everything I owned was sold for some bizarre reason, my landlord invited me to leave my lease at my wellness center without any, you know, repercussion. Like he came to me and said, by the way, I know you have another 15 months, but would you like to get out this month? Like everything flowed. And, you know, Mariam, you saw, I went from having a huge bustling business to literally having a few items that I put in a storage unit in just a month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole process was 45 days. And it was only later that I learned if we had stayed, some dreadful doom would have happened to my family yeah. that I'm not going to talk about, but it would have been life destroying. Yeah, it's always, there is always a reason when they guide. And that's one of the ways they, you know, we get messages from the universe and we manifest as well. I mean, I'm very glad that I finally, because you know me, I always, I'm skeptical about, oh, did I get that right? Didn't I <laughs> always like, but Second, finally, yes. you know, I felt like they're telling me relentlessly, put these paintings available, make them available. You know? And finally, I'm like, okay, you know, and I'm so glad because there was a reason they wanted me to do this. And mm -hmm. later on, you know, they're like, like basically not in so many words, they were just making me understand. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. This is how we want you to spread the light. We're doing this. You just are the, the tool, just make them available. So I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it kind of was a humbling experience that I actually listened. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And for me, then a year ago, when they said to me, we want you to make an online school. Because, you know, I was happy traveling around, teaching here, teaching there. They said, we want you to build an online school. And, you know, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And I said, well, I'm happy to, but you need to send me, like, extraordinary teachers and make sure it's, you know, profitable. Otherwise, it's just a lot of work and a lot of money out of pocket for no purpose. Right. And immediately that's when the Guruji called. It was like the next day the Guruji called, Bonita, Bonita G, I want to come and teach with you. <laughs> We're in the United States for a short time. Right. Looking good there, Mario. <laughs> and um, a few other amazing teachers showed up out of the blue and said, you know, can, can you host me to teach on any platform? So... I built this online school and then I went off like right before I went to Mexico to hang out in the mountains of central Mexico with like shamans and archaeologists. I'm like, 
I don't know why I made this school. <laughs> and then, but then mid February, I got my first vision of what, you know, the future vision. And it's not like I go through every day with future vision, but when it hits, it hits. And I was like, oh, I saw everything that happens this year. I, you know, I saw it all in one blast. I woke up in the morning. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> but how great to have an online platform before all that hit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really. If for no other reason, it helped keep my stress levels down. Right. Because I knew I had a way to connect with people. And, and um, I've hosted a number of teachers, a number of our peers this summer, this past year. So that makes me feel good. I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Right, right. Yeah. So you can't really see it here, but the bowl of the spoon is getting deeper and deeper. I'm like... Um, Digging you know, out. Yeah, it's, it's a soup spoon and it's deep, but I'm making it, I'm like making it bigger and deeper. Oh, I haven't even thought about doing like that, something like I that. I saw there's a video of Uri Geller and he has a big fat soup spoon and oh, he nice. holds it like this, like this. And it goes down. And he f gets his Kundalini fire. Like he, it's like, a, oh, he gets a lot of breath and then he sent all the energy of his body, all the energy flowing into his thumb. And he, he made another depth, another little bowl and like his thumb went through and made a second little bowl. Bubble. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's really impressive. That's amazing. Yeah, ever since then, I've been like fixated with trying to mess with the bowls of spoons. <laughs> But I don't do that big gut, like, I feel like that's just such a masculine energy and I'm more like gentle flow. So you got to do what works for you. Yeah. But I invite this spoon to become like soft, like taffy. And that works more for me, but I need to practice it more to get in alignment with it. I hadn't even thought of doing that. Yeah, so that's something to add to this mm -hmm. crazy parlor trick. Yep. I'm right. very proud of myself with this knife because I have to say knives are a little more challenging for whatever reason. I'm not sure, but they have been for me anyway. So it's really impressive. This one relented. So I was very pleased. Mm -hmm. Well, someone asked if we can manifest your broken spoon to go back together. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm wonder. sure we can. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not sure. I want to try it here because it might take a little while, but I'm sure <laughs> it can. Yeah. So I don't even know if you can tell the difference, but it's definitely getting deeper and wider. Okay. And so you guys, I want to bring up, I'm going to see if I can screen share to Facebook. Um, here it is. Okay. So this right here is the first spoon I ever bent. And as you can see, it's, it's a thick teaspoon and that light shining in the middle image, that light shining, that's actually the energy of it. There was no light shining on it. As that's soon as I bent it, isn't that amazing? That's a really great shot. That is a really thick spoon that I got with that little twisty there. And that's what motivated me for the first class. Like I showed these pictures on Facebook and said, hey, look what I just learned how to do. Come on by my wellness center tomorrow. I'll teach you how to do it. If, if we can figure it out together, I don't know. And it was packed. Yeah. <laughs> I was there too. <laughs> that was such a fun class. It really was. It really, really was. <laughs> so, um, I, um, what was I going to say? Um, when I bent that spoon, I actually picked it up Tuesday evening after the Tuesday night, uh, white light energy healing meditation at my wellness center. So it's probably around 9 30, 10 o'clock. I'm at home, picked up the spoon, 
and said, I'm going to carry this around with me so I can figure out how to bend it. And it was Saturday morning. I was watching cartoons on my laptop, drinking coffee, playing with a spoon. I finally figured out how to bend it. So it was, you know, if you guys are watching us, you're like, I want to manifest, but I don't know how, or I want to bend spoons, but I don't know how. Understand, like you watch us here going, you know, um, yeah, it's about getting out of your way so that things can happen. That's true. I remember in your class, I distinctly remember this because it was just such an amazing moment. I was sitting there with, uh, with the spoon and I remember all of a sudden I heard in my mind, now. Yes. Yeah. And when I did that, it was like, <laughs> it just kind of like bent itself, completely yielded. It was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I hear that too, like now. It's the only yeah. time I actually heard loudly in my mind now. But the other times you just get like, <laughs> you said now and my spoon went now. <laughs> You're still listening to me. <laughs> Your fork anyway. Yeah, I was listening to you. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you are saying the only time. No, you... it's just that was the first, you know, first and only time that I actually heard it verbalize now. <laughs> wow, look at that. You destroyed that thing. Yeah, it's um, here. My hand's buzzing so much. I'm giving it a break. Cause yeah, like, yeah. The energy can get really. kind of thick after a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's been an hour. You and I have been yapping, girl. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> can pick up four things at once <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird it's working yay people are bending spoons with us and i did this in high school moved solids though didn't tell anyone much about it <laughs> yeah it is, wise. it is amazing how many times i teach a spoon bending class like back when we were allowed to be around each other and people will say things like, wow, when I was young, I used to levitate, but then I convinced myself that it was all just make-believe, but now I'm bending splints and I realized I really was levitating or walking through doors or like, you know, like, yeah, we, we talk ourselves out of it, but we can bring it back. Things we can actually do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that to a fork. Yes. <laughs> well, gosh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank it you, is everybody. Time to depart. Um, so check out Mariam's website, and Mariam will share about her upcoming event and um, her program, which sounds amazing. We and that, yes. Yeah. I'll and again, about it tomorrow. Excellent. And again, like Mariam life coached me for a month last spring and it totally, like, it just, whew, it was so good and so fun. I really looked forward to it. It was really, you were, you, it was just amazing how you just got all of the unnecessary released and all of the beneficial in alignment. Thank and you. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I broke shattered a contact lens with fire from my hand heat. Oh my! Okay. Wow! <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank you. And wow, I hope your eye is okay. Wow. Um, and yeah, if, uh, please come join my manifestation class. One thing about manifestation and stuff like spoon bending is like when you do it on your own that's great but when you're in a group and you're all doing it you get that energy from the whole yeah, it's amazing it multiplies the energy really magnifies yes so you know please feel welcome to come and join us and 
you know, I'll tell you, if you join us and you get through the first class and you're like, oh my God, this is terrible. Nita's awful. I'll give you your money back. But it's such a you're wonderful- You're never going to say that though. <laughs> But you know, I'm going to say that about any class Bonita teaches. Trust me, I know. <laughs> but I'm like Trader Joe's. You just got to speak up and it's not a worry because I want, I want everyone to have this skill. I want everyone to know, like, we can do it. So let's do it. There's nothing we cannot do. We just need to get out of our own way. Mm -hmm. As Lord used to say, allow, allow, allow. Allow. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful Bye. day. Bye. And let's see. Here we go.